Question number one tonight, gentlemen, is how do you bring the energy at a wedding event where you've had kind of this long, kind of drawn out cocktail and dinner time, especially say if the venue wasn't able to turn the floor over right away so that people are just, you, you can feel no matter what you've done, the energy is just kind of tanked. Now, maybe a spotlight dance or two, and then you're, you're to bring the energy. How do you get yourself up for that? How do you, ah, at that moment? It is one of those times of the night that I hate the most. Like, like it's just that waiting period because I always want to go, I need to do something. I need to get them moving something. And, and one of the things that you talk about them flipping over the floor, my biggest push is my couples decide that they need to talk to every table for 35 minutes. <laughs> and, and so it's just like, we can't move forward until we do this. You want to talk to them? That's fine. So a lot of times I had that conversation with my couples ahead of time, but it's, it never fails. Like, oh, we're not spending that much time. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Um, so I like to, I like to prime the pump as much as I can, as much as my couples will let me within the confines of, of dinner music. Um, I might start normal with where they're, where they wanted to go, but towards the end, I try and raise that energy a little bit so that even if it's, um, e even if we're still kind of going, okay, we've got a little bit of time before we can progress to open dancing. The toes are tapping, the the fingers are the fingers are are going, the heads nodding, like they're getting into that music a little bit, so that when I can flip that switch, I, I've made that switch. The other thing that I've I've done is try and create an event that brings everybody. I kind of almost create a hard break in between what was dinner. And what is going to be open dancing. And this works really well if you convince your couples to have like a big group photo on the dance floor, you know, as, and use that as kind of like, all right, we're going to bring everybody out. And you kind of, you get, you are able to have some energy with it because you're pulling them to, to come to the floor, not for anything other than to smile pretty for Bobby and Susie, mm -hmm. but to, you know, to, to make them be able to have that. And then once you had that, then you're like, all right, we're starting the party. And it, and it kind of has that mental change. So it's not like music, music, music. We did some more music. All right, now we're doing music that's faster. It's something you should dance. It's that it's like a, a break in, and it creates an event, for lack of better terms. I see what you did there. Yeah. Yeah. Design, flow. And we arrive at a, 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 a spot. Nice. Cubby, what's your what's your methodology? I don't know. It's all pre-done with a couple. Um, a lot of times I like to do the scavenger hunt before I do the formals, and my scavenger hunt's very comedic. Um, and if you're not familiar with the scavenger hunt, um, it's where you bring 10 guests up and you tell them to go find a business card or uh, you know, a pair of glasses, someone sexier than you. Um, and there's a lot of shtick that goes with it. Um, and then at the very end, they collect money for the bride and groom, so there's a lot of energy going in there. Um, and it's just kind of... I get people... I recently got a review where they said I brought uh, a lot of some comedic to a very emotional day. You know, I mean, it was very great emotional, but it, it, it lightened the mood and it was kind of fun. And it, and then it took me into my formals and they're like, okay, so they haven't really got to see a lot of your hosting yet. Cause basically you're just dis dismissing tables or you're playing cocktail music and you're not usually, you know, you're making smaller announcements, but not a lot of announcements. So they don't really know your personality just yet or how fun they may have heard your grand, grand intro. And, you know, there's several different types of grand intros. There's the, you know, the basketball court one or the explain the couple, how they know each other bride and groom. And so you can show you, show off your personality and MC skills there as well to, to kick off the evening. But if you got that, like you said, and we're going into that long dinner flipping room, um, I like to do uh, a, a fun game. And, uh, and, and that's, and then go into the dances and then kick off the night with the energy. And mm -hmm. then yeah, I can kind of generally win them over from that. Hmm. And not only that, my scavenger hunts get close to, uh, I just did one this last, this last Saturday and I had about 120 people and they got $1,100. Oh, nice. Um, uh, yeah. And, uh, it's, and a little hint for everybody. Um, if your couple has Venmo, have them print out the QR codes and put them on popsicle sticks. Cause not everybody will bring cash to a wedding, but they might have a Venmo, you know, you put them on there and you have the bride and groom both kind of have separate ones because it's a competition between the two people. Whoever collects the most money will get $20 from the gift card from the bride and groom. So, um, it, they'll Venmo you money. It's a great tip to, uh, to use if you're doing the scavenger hunt. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So, so my methodology, I've kind of, that's the after the spotlight dances and as such that's where i i'm on the microphone probably the most especially during some upbeat songs because that becomes the time to do 
uh, some prompting of the crowd and getting them involved and uh, to show uh, kind of that upbeat energy and being really, really excited and, and into whatever music you're playing. Even though I've, you know, we've probably played the same songs in the same sets and done those same first three songs a hundred million times type of a situation. But it, it becomes more of a, an experience on the microphone to be able to do that. And, uh, it, um, taking one of the, uh, one of the little things from, uh, listening to Mike Walter's weddings where he's inviting, you know, inviting people out to celebrate with, uh, Bobby and Susie, you know, that continually hitting or coming back to that a couple of times early on is that, uh, you know, Hey, we're gonna have a big celebration for them. To, and it's amazing how, by dropping the name of the couple, how quickly people are like, yeah, we sh- we need to get out there. Um, so, uh, really, it's, you know, almost three different perspectives here of, of how we how we pr- approach this, uh, which is interesting, because yeah, there's very seldom that we have three different ways <laughs> that we're doing things. <laughs> no, and I can see your songs too. That first set, you know, like maybe a Tayo Cruz Dynamite, put your hands in the air, um, or Starships by Nicki Minaj, get your hands in the air, Part- party in the USA. You know, there's several different songs that we can get very interactive with them um, right off the bat. Yeah, like there's no, no, you know, no beer in he- there's no beer in heaven. No beer today, you know all those good those good big songs. You know you play those and everyone you know it's a little bit sadder, but you know we get the message across. Yes, I would say if you're going to use John's method, practice it a bunch at home. Yes, where there's nobody around, because I I know for me one of the one of the things I have the most difficulty with is creating energy when there is no energy, and and coming out of that you're going to try and pull them to the dance floor. You've got to do something that's going to get that energy to the level that wants them to move towards it. So you've got to get used to kind of being the fire starter, if you will, Very much so. for that. And it, it really helps if you have, um, you know, in the pre-conversations with the bride and groom or the couple, it's talking about uh, that early, I need you on the floor for the first few songs because that's, and then it becomes much easier than to come on out and we're going to celebrate with the the couple tonight. Yay, this is their big day. Um, and then if you have some of the wedding party that's out there that are, are starting to show any sign of life, then you can encourage that over the microphone to come on out there and, you know, dance with the bridesmaids because they're out here to have a great time and show us some dance moves. Oh, yeah. You know, little little things like that can really help open up the floor and get things going. Uh, Cubby, as you were, you were mentioning uh, uh, your, your game and such uh, – uh, K uh, Productions here mentions, of course, the photo doing the the bride and groom photo race around the room. That's, oh yeah, table races, what we call them in the Midwest, table yeah, races. Yeah, yep. So definitely, uh, definitely a, a lot of different ideas about uh, how to how to start to build that energy in the room and and get the uh, dance going successfully. So awesome. Be, really quick, be careful the table races. If your photographer's not on board, you may piss them off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like if you got a lazy photographer that does not want to chase them around. Um, just make sure you consult and it's a, you know, not that you're going to do off the cuff. Yeah, that would be, yeah, you can't, yeah, you've got to make sure you're having communication for sure. But, uh, okay, let's jump to our next question. <laughs> 